Hey guys, so in this video I thought I'd go over how I hack and reverse engineer a car that is brand new to me using some tools I've made over the years of car hacking. Here I'll be using ECUs from the RX-8 we recently purchased as I have plans to create custom ECUs for it in the near future so I need to reverse engineer the current ones. This however can be interpreted as a general guide for all cars. This video is accompanied by a full write-up on reverse engineering our RX-8 available on GitHub, link in the description if you want to check that out. To begin with, I sourced two ECUs from an RX-8 from eBay that I am particularly interested in. The engine ECU, the instrument cluster. Additionally, you will also need a wiring harness, banana lead connectors, banana leads, an OBD splitter, in my case I'm using Markina's OBD freeway, a socket can device, in my case I'm using Markina's M2 adapter with the M2 RET firmware. And finally, a laptop. Next, I hooked everything together. Wiring diagrams are available in the write-up. Very quick note from editing me, I know I'm using the Machina M2 but I've checked their store recently and it seems that there's none of these available, they're all out of stock. So as an alternative, because it's socket can, what you can actually use is a Raspberry Pi with either one of these very very cheap MCP2515 uh, adapters which does socket can, or if you want something more complicated, one of these can shields which goes on top of the Pi. Either way, it will still allow you to connect to the can network of the uh, test setup. To begin with, I'm going to bring up the socket can interface on the M2 over here. So I'm going to type some commands into my laptop, sudo slcan. Okay, so with that all done, you can now see the blinky light on the M2, implying that CAN frames are being sent back and forth across the network, and I can do CAN dump in my second terminal window to show that there is data coming in through the CAN network here with just the engine ECU and uh, instrument cluster plugged in. So one of the first things to check first of all is which ECU send out which CAN frames, and to do that you can very simply just unplug one of the ECUs and see what happens. So let's go ahead and unplug the engine ECU over here, so I'm just going to pull the plug out on the engine ECU and watch how the CAN data suddenly changes. So at this point we basically know that ID430 is the only thing being broadcast from the instrument cluster and any other CAN data is coming in from the engine ECU. See there we go, and you also see a brief change on the instrument cluster when I unplug it. See the oil temp needle go down slightly and the coolant might come off when I plug it in, you see them come back on. So. Now to do the more complex stuff of working out, okay, what CAN data means what on the car. So to do that, we're just going to launch, um, we're going to launch Open Vehicle Diag, which is a app that I've been developing for ages. And we're going to go to Socket CAN, select CAN 0, launch Open Vehicle Diag. And then I can go to CAN Tracer. And within the CAN Tracer window, it shows me current data being sent across the network along, I've got CAN dump running in the background here. It's full screen this now. So with this all open, I can now start playing around with the CAN network. So what I'm going to first of all do is I'm going to pick out one of the IDs. So I'm going to pick 201 because I have been playing that with that before, but this is just a rough example. So let's pick out ID 201. So as you can see, you can see roughly how quickly it's being transmitted. It's about every 50-ish milliseconds. So I'm going to first of all unplug the engine ECU. So that turns off. That way, the data which I'm sending from ID 201 is a is my data and not the engine ECU's data. 
So we're going to go to can ID hex and change this to 0201. And we're going to begin setting, first of all, I'll set everything to zero. So I know the can ID has uh, seven bit, uh, eight bits long, eight bytes long, sorry. So we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight into there. And we're going to say send frame. Now you can see it all of a sudden jumping back up here, but you see nothing happening on the instrument cluster yet. So I'm going to begin now by all of a sudden setting all these bits to FF, which basically means 255. So we'll try that again with all of, there you go. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now I saw briefly there when I did the first two bits that the instrument cluster needle went absolutely wild. So we're going to play for that second bit and set that to 00. zero. Ah, there you go. So I think we found the engine RPM signal at this first bit. So I'm going to set this to 1-1. One, one. Okay. So obviously if open vehicle dag actually the CAN data that you are modifying happens live. So if you change a bit or a byte on the CAN data field, it's immediately applied and sent on the bus, which is very, very handy. So I can see that uh, 0x11 on the first uh, first byte seems to imply engine RPM. But I'm going to hazard a guess and say it might be a few bits long just because it might be more than one byte long just because one byte has a limit of 255 and there's 10,000 RPM on the RX-80 can display. So we're going to set this second bit to F and see what happens. Okay, I saw the instrument cluster needle move ever so slightly when doing that. So that means that, that, so that, means that the uh, speed or engine RPM is actually three nibbles long or two and a half bytes. So it'd be a 12 bit value. So for now, let's disconnect from this CAN network. And now I'm gonna actually probe something else. So this is another feature that Open Vehicle Diag does, and it lets me talk to the diagnostic functions of these ECUs and basically play around with them that way. Uh, so you can basically extract data from the ECUs, which normally only Mazda's tool would be able to do. Admittedly, you'd have to work out what it means, but let's demonstrate that quickly here. So we can go to ECU Diagnostics and I'll enter, actually I'll plug the engine ECU back in because I actually need it now. So plug the engine ECU back in and select 07E0 as a send address and 07E8 as the receive address in hex. So that's basically now talking to the engine ECU over here through Diagnostic. And I know from some of my previous work I've done that this is a KWP2000 session. You can also launch a UDS session, which is Unified Diagnostic Services found on newer cars, or you could just launch a custom ISO TP session and play around with sending and receiving data um, with the ECU. So we'll select Launch KWP and connect to the ECU. Now over here I've got Session Control, so I can ask for Default Mode, and the ECU said Enter Default Session OK. So I know Mazda's Diagnostic Session Mode is 1087, so 10 is session control and 87 is the mode that I want to go into. So we'll say send and the ECU responded, great. Now, how do I know what services the ECU supports? Well, with Open Vehicle Diag, you can actually ask it to scrape the services and this will attempt to ask the ECU for every single service it supports. So we'll go and press that and wait a little bit. And here we go. So this supports a lot of OBD PIDs. So OBD service 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, as well as all of these KWP PIDs. However, there are also three unknown ones, which my Open Vehicle Diag doesn't understand what that PID is, like PID 12. So we can basically begin playing with that. So I know, for instance, the syntax for uh, ECU reset would be 1101. And we're going to press that and it goes security access denied. So this is interesting. So apparently if I want to reset this ECU here, i.e. just make it do like a boot cycle, I have to get security clearance from the ECU. So that's interesting. So. Another thing that we can do is we can go read clear diagnostic trouble codes and say, hey, what's the identified DTCs on this engine? Here we go, we've got three DTCs on here. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I can also ask it to clear them. Give it a sec because this, and we go clear DTCs okay. So we can clear DTCs using this method. Now note that this is not OBD clear DTCs, this is KWP, so it lets you do a little bit more, because with OBD, I've noticed that sometimes the ECU doesn't actually clear them if the engine's running, whereas with KWP, it forces the ECU to clear the DTCs regardless if the engine is running or not. Now note here that if, for instance, I ask the ECU to go into standby mode, it says subfunction supported not uh, in valid format. That basically means that the ECU supports service 10, which is diagnostic session control, but it doesn't support standby mode, which is, I think, I can't remember exactly what ID that is for putting in uh, extended mode, for putting in standby mode. 
So one other service that I do in my write-up is that I talk about scraping uh, local identifiers on the ECU. So local identifier is basically like a little value which the ECU will store. Maybe there's multiple values in there like sensor values or stuff like that, that you can read. Here we go. So if I send 2100, I get this absolutely giant, huge response. So one thing that's interesting is 2100 seems to give me an ASCII string to begin with. This looks like ASCII 4A to 34 over here. So let me quickly go and throw this into a hex converter. Okay, so putting that string from 4A to 34 into a ASCII converter actually yields that this seems to be the VIN number stored on this ECU. Now, note that I'm absolutely happy of disclosing this VIN because this is not the ECU from our actual RX8. It's an ECU I bought from eBay, as already described. So that's pretty cool. So the VIN number seems to be stored in local identifier 00 towards the start of it. So again, I'm going to write that all down and put it in my write-up. So as this video is getting quite long now, I figured this would be probably a good time to end it. If you are curious about Open Vehicle Diag or my RX-8 engineering notes, please feel free to check all the links out in the description as usual. And happy car hacking. See you in the next one.